Hey guys, heading out for a sunset sup after work and um, wanted to introduce a new video series I'm putting together. It's, uh, it's all about how to build your own stand-up paddleboard and I'm super stoked about it. Um, keen to get it going. I've already done a bit of work in the garage, so uh, let's pop over there. So let's go. Let's talk about the sup. The sup itself, it's 12 and a half foot long by 30 inches which is uh, approximately about 3.8 um, meters by 76 centimeters. And it's got around 200 liters of um, volume inside. Built out of three millimeter uh, plywood and, and fiberglass and epoxy, of course. And my aim here is not to try and sell plants. My aim here is to get people in the water, to educate on you know, some of the, the really simple techniques about you know, construction and boat building, um, and also grow a bit of a YouTube channel as well. So the only thanks I need is you know, a thumbs up or you know, a comment, um, maybe even subscribe to and keep watching to follow the build process. So um, I'm really excited about it. Let's get started. And the first step is making a workbench. So here we go. As well as making the design free for anyone to use, another goal is to keep the build cost down as much as possible. And this extends to the workbench. No point in having a free sup design if it costs a bomb to build it, right? So here you see me cutting up an old pine pallet to remove the horizontal pieces with a circular saw and chisel. Now these pieces will form the top of the workbench. Next, I fasten two lengths of 3.6 meter structural pine to my old saw horses, double checking to ensure the pine lengths are running parallel to each other. Dad. Look at my hammer. Here. What do you got there? Hammer. What are you going to do with that? No, this is the hammer. Oh, I think so. Maxi boy. I then spaced out the timbers from the old pallet evenly across the long pine lengths, using a string line to keep them in alignment. Once I was happy with the spacing, I used my builder's square to check the angles and fasten the top boards in place with my cordless brad gun. And anyone who owns one of these tools will agree, they are one of the most useful tools you could own. And I love mine. Before I fastened the boards down, I made sure the nails were faced down and then finished off all the boards with some 60 grit on a hand sander just to knock any edges down. I'm going to duck down into the hardware store, grab three sheets of 3mm plywood and two lengths of 2.4 by 30mm by 12mm lightweight timber. Check for any kind of warps as I'm doing here. If she's bent, chuck her back. So the next step is to look at your timbers and work out which is your best faces. So you have a better side and a not so good side. So here I am putting my best side face up and then I'll be marking the corner with panel A and top side. From here, I do the same with panel B. Look at my sides, put some sticky tape down and then mark it with a B. Now, before we get into scarfing the timbers, we want to put the two good sides together. That way, after the scarf has been cut and you flip them over to join them together, the two best sides will be face up. So here you can see me aligning the timbers and I spent a bit of time getting this right. I wanted to make sure that all the sides were in alignment before I measured out my scarf. Now, this is three millimeter plywood and I'm doing a one to 10 scarf. It's a one to eight scarf minimum, and I've just rounded it up to a one to 10. So for three millimeter, three millimeter plywood, it's a 30 millimeter scarf. And that's what I'm marking out here at the moment. To fasten the plywood down, I took a couple of scraps of six millimeter hardwood plywood over to the bandsaw and cut them up. I'll be using my brad gun again, which I love, as you know, to fasten these down. Now, the benefit of doing this is that it only leaves a very small hole in the plywood, fastens it down, it's easy to remove later, and 
uh, the fiberglass, when you put it over the, the top of the, the plywood, will cover that hole up nicely. You won't even see it. So I'm about to start scarfing and I noticed that the panels are sitting up a little bit and I can't have this. Any kind of you know, distortion there with those panels means that my, my scarf joint just isn't gonna work. So what do I use? The trusty Brad gun and my old Stanley plane to keep the, the plywood down. So here you see me using my cordless angle grinder with a sandy flap disc to knock down that scarf. I then fold this up with 120 grit on my orbital sander and the scarf came out perfect. Next, it was time to measure and scarf the long pieces that will form the deck cleats. Now, and these get fastened to the sides of the sup and then that's what the top will be glued and fastened to. So it's 12 mil thickness and my scarf is eight times 12 is 96 millimeters. Really simple. After I'd marked the first deck clip, I laid the second one on top, made sure it was all aligned, measured out my 96 millimeters and made a mark. I then clamped it all together to the workbench using some uh, West End Draft branded clamps and then got to work with the planer. After a fair bit of elbow grease with my none too sharp planer, I eventually got the job done and it looked pretty good. I then unclamped the two deck cleats, lined them up on the workbench and from what I could see it was a really good join. So I'm really happy with how that turned out with the planer even though it was a tad dull. All right guys, had to get out of the garage. It's more than enough time spent inside. It's a beautiful, sunny winter's day here in, uh, in the New South Wales, central coast in Australia. So getting out, go for a sup. Um, and wanted to wrap up this video here, being outside where I started it. Also wanted to bring up a couple of points that I may not have addressed in the video itself. And that is first of all, the plywood I'm using. The, uh, the astute among you will probably realize that I'm not using marine grade plywood. Um, and I'm comfortable with that. It's the same plywood I use to build my outrigger sailing canoe, double outrigger sailing canoe. And that's holding up really well. And the reason why is because I keep it inside. <clears throat> and I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the stand-up paddleboard too. You know, it'll be, It'll be sheathed in fiberglass and epoxy, so it'll be watertight and it's not going to be left out in the elements. So I'm really comfortable with that. It also made sense financially too. The equivalent 3mm plywood in marine ply is $120 a sheet compared to $27 a sheet. So it made sense for me to do that. So I just wanted to clarify on that. If you're going to build this up, and I hope someone does, and I hope now lots of you guys do, uh, it's your choice to decide whether you want to use marine grade plywood or regular plywood you get from the hardware store, your choice. Um, what I also wanted to say is that I've already recorded the next episode, and that is where I've glued up the two plywood panels to make two 16 foot long panels to start cutting out the hull uh, sides and bottom, and I've already glued up the, the deck cleats, so episode two is ready to go. So really excited about that. Make sure you keep an eye out for it. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and ring that bell to see you in the next one but in the meantime guys get out there have some fun i'll see you next week so yeah